Welcome to the Sunderland School Committee meeting for Monday, February 12th, 2018. Um, the, uh, start with the minutes from January. Any questions, corrections, comments? Motion. Sure. 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 Give, give me just one second. Right. I don't think I had any, but let me just be sure. Yep. Here. I guess I just have a question. Mm -hmm. um, and Patty, maybe this is directed to you, even though I don't think you wrote these. Um, there's a statement in here that there was a discussion about a new position in early of early childhood and interventionist special education teacher, which would not impact the budget because funding would come from early childhood tuition, sped revolving, and school choice. Um, my sense is that really actually does affect the budget, even if it comes from those, because we have a choice as to what we pay out of those accounts, school, like school choice, just to use an example, and we could put one teacher in or a different teacher in, and it wouldn't make any difference. And the fact is, it's still an additional expense for the school, and so it does affect the budget. When we talk, when we talk about that budget, we talk about the, the budget that we're going to present to the town. I can change it that it would not um, increase the appropriate yeah. uh, the appropriation we're requesting from the town. But then, as you remember from our discussion later in that meeting, we decided not to do uh, the. Uh, ten thousand, you know, the, the, the ten and the five thousand out of the separate funds and to put them back in the general budget because we didn't want the school choice ending number to appear too low. Correct. So it is a consideration. Okay. So I so you you could um I mean I don't think it, it needs to refer to the um the budget other than that that was to that we came to to put ten thousand of the salary for this position on the general budget rather than school choice, as that account is running low. Right, and it, it, it clarifies it there. I think it, it's just the terminology we use, Peter, when we talk about the budget. We're talking about the budget that we were, were looking to get from the town, and then we have our other funding sources that we could talk about school choice. So you're correct; it is our total budget. But when we talk about budget, we're talking about what we're re requesting from the town rather than using our other funding sources. Okay, but I just, they all do, in fact, tie together. And um, I just want to sort of make sure the members of the committee who deal with this less are aware, you know, aware of that. Thank you. Uh, Otherwise, uh, it's fine. But you can leave it as you will. As you, you know, be simple, just leave it the way it is. I wouldn't object. Thank you. I get your point. Um, any other questions or? I'll move approve them as submitted. Unless there are other questions, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Second. I'll second. Thanks. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, financial statements. So I sent that out to today uh, for your review, and I apologize because I thought I sent it out Friday when I sent you the new budget. Um, but then, um, and there was when I went back to make sure I had answered uh, Mr. McFarland's question about that line, I realized I had never sent it out. So we do have a teacher that's out on unpaid time, and that is why there is a seven thousand dollar variance in that account. Um, you have tonight six warrants to sign for a total of 43,632, I'm sorry, 652 and 32 cents. And there are payroll warrants to sign as well tonight. All right. Can I ask a question about the financial report? Mm -hmm. um, since you deal with this all the time and have a much better idea of what's going on than, than I would, um, do you have uh, any areas of concern now and also areas that uh, there uh, might be 
excess funds to deal with the areas of concern? No, right now we are, um, well, last month we talked, we were like running behind about 4025 but now that I verified that that 7000 is um, free, so now we're positive $3,000. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about, uh, Dr. Carey will talk about an issue that is going to be costing us some money, so we're going to have to go find some money somewhere. <laughs> I mean, I just, from my own point of view, it would help in my understanding of the budget that if there were uh, any changes of significance from month to month, um, that they actually be uh, included in a short narrative with the financial report so that I wouldn't feel like I was having to search through line by line to see where the significant, if there were any significant changes and, um, you know, could spend our time a little more efficiently, I guess. But and I think, I mean, one well, of the that things is that unreasonable? We, uh, um, not necessarily. I mean, and we, it's actually more recently that we are getting to, we're getting, we're in advance on the, on the financial, but it, if we're going to do that, if you can, you know, in some ways it does make sense if, if that, like even if there's the, one or two sentences of like these are the things you'll probably notice. Yes, I keep a which are the things you I do in the running, meeting. I know you do I it when you come here. I keep a running spreadsheet, so I'll just give you a copy of my running spreadsheet of what line items I think we have money in. That would be terrific. Okay, that would that's just what I'm looking for. That's how I keep track. Okay. I I I uh, dole out my request to Patty sort of in. in <laughs> It's, this, uh, is, uh, this is well the week scheduled where, doses. It, yeah, it, this is this is the week from hell because we're yeah. out every night at, at every different school and just trying yeah. to keep the nuances of yep. the different financial statuses of each school is very difficult. <clears throat> so you just got to bear with me during this time. Yeah, but I think it's a good good for us to aim for that. Um, okay. Um, any others? And that's all you wanted to bring to our attention, correct? Yes. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Um, so then, uh, public comment. See no public. Unfinished business. Um, we're going to just switch A and B, and so uh, do the um, go into the proposed FY19 budget, and then we'll come to the capital expenditures. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So uh, Patty went through and worked the numbers from our last meeting. Everyone has a copy? On page one of 32, you'll see the, um, the superintendent's message and uh, the impact that uh, the insurance will be having with uh, with uh, particularly uh, the towns, we'll be dealing with that on the other end. Um, and our uh, administration, our administration team is amazing, and of course we all recognize Ben and his efforts here and some of the great uh, accomplishments of our academic uh, programs. It's amazing. And of course we do need the taxpayers and the stakeholders. We need them to understand and to support us so we are going uh, on to page 3 of 32. This uh, FY19 town appropriation budget is in the amount of $2,602,832. This is an increase from the current fiscal year of $114,494, or 4.6% from this current year. In addition, Sunderland Elementary School will use various other funding sources in the amount of 784,241. And of course, those are our school choice, our SPED grant, our revolving grant, our Title I. So the entire FY19 budget, including all sources of revenue, is $3,386,520. Uh, Patty will get into the details, but I wanted to point out, as if you could move a little further on to page 7 of 32. 
and you'll see some uh, pretty charts. These charts are meant to give you kind of an overview and an illustration of where we're going with this, uh, with this budget. On page 7 of 32, you can see the proposed expenditures. This is how the budget we're proposing to spend the money of the budget. Um, the big green thing, you can't see it, but it's instruction on the expenditures. The instruction is, seven, I'm saying, I'm seeing 78%. So 78% of the money that we are allotted through all our revenue sources goes right to the teaching of the children. And that's the supplies and everything. And I'll get deeper into that in the next page. Um, you'll see buildings and facilities are 6% of the overall budget. Administration, that is your central office administration, your building level administration, the clerical, your business services, all of those things, that's 11%. And then other student services are 5%. And in that, you'll see we have health, the nurse, things like that. Sorry. If you look further down, you'll see the FY19 revenue sources. This is where all our money comes from. The town appropriation is 76.84%. The town appropriation, of course, also includes Chapter 70, state funding that comes in, and um, the assessments to our taxpayers. Uh, I don't know what the exact portion of the assessment versus the Chapter 70, but um, the town can certainly tell us that. Uh, we have revenues from school choice. There are 13.78% of our whole budget comes from school choice. SPED revolving is 4.93%. Our early childhood revolving is 1.33%. Title I is 0.47%. And then we have a SPED grant, and that grant provides us with 2.65%. And you can see the numbers as Patty moves on to the um, <coughs> to the, uh, the exit, all the details. But if you turn to the next page, we dig deeper into those four areas that the, uh, the budget is uh, involved in, our uh, proposed budget. So, so when we look at administration, that's 11% of our budget. You can see over here that 11%, 27% of that 11%, is superintendent, business, and fin finance offices. So those are all the people that work in the central office, uh, the payroll, Brenda Antes, all those folks that do the work behind the scenes for the, uh, for the school. Uh, District-wide information and management and technology, that's 15% of the 11% of the administration. Uh, we also have uh, insurance, uh, retirement, other adjustments, and that's 14% of this 11%. Building-based leadership and clerical services, that's 42%, and that's because all of that comes from Sunderland. So 42% of 11% is running the building. And then school committee and legal services, that's 2%. And those are the costs of ha the having a school committee and uh, a lawyer at our fingertips, we can call him. And that's 2% of the 11%. When we look at instruction, uh, FY19, that is 78% of what we spend, and, and as it should be, because that's, that's what we're about. And you can look at uh, teachers are 57% of what we have um, for instruction, so 57% of 78% are the teachers, as you would expect. Uh, our curriculum, our SPED, and our early childhood directors are 3%. Supplies, materials, hardware, uh, software for the computers, that's 6%. Uh, instructional assistance, 24%. Uh, guided services, uh, with the psychologist and the guidance, that's 3%. And then medical and therapeutic services is 7%. And those are our folks that OTPT that work with our disabled children. When you go down and you look at uh, FY19 buildings and facilities, that's 6% of the whole budget. 
Um, and when that's broken down, you can see heating and utilities is 21%. Maintenance of buildings, grounds, and equipment is 29%. Custodian services, those salaries, 43%. And then networking and communications is 7%. And then other student services, that's 5% of our budget. And the, you'll see there that it's transportation services, 50% of 5%. Health services, 45% of five percent and that would be the nurse and um, the, uh, the, the the nurse's office and those uh, costs and then our food services right now is five percent of five percent so that kind of breaks it down into um, a visual so you can actually understand and see where the money's going the actual numbers are all embedded in the uh, budget, and Patty is going to take it from here uh, to really, you know, to let us go through and get ready and ask questions. But thank you. Okay, so if we look at page 9 of 32, um, as I had told you before, on the left, the number of students, we freeze the 2018 numbers at the October 1st census because that is where our funding will come from. But I have updated the projected 2019 to what our current enrollment is. And right now, um, according to um, the, our school secretary, we have 16 Sunderland students enrolled for kindergarten next year. Um, and then I just switched, you know, um, we, it looks like in, in kindergarten, uh, uh, I mean, in grade one, we might have lost one. So the numbers down the bottom reflect our current population. Right. And we are anticipating the kindergarten number to be closer to 30. Yeah. Okay. And then on the right-hand side, uh, nothing has changed since the last time that you saw it. Um, we're going to be up 1.1 position, uh, adding the early childhood interventionist. <laughs> Um, and then uh, point um, increasing our uh, occupational therapist by uh, point one. Um, now, when we had uh, discussed adding the fifteen thousand dollars, which I did do, we thought we were going to be at a budget of four point three three uh, increase. Um, it turned out to be four point six because there was uh, some charges that came through the central office when we finalized our health insurance. Um, the, we belong to the Hampshire Group Insurance Trust and back in June the Frontier School Committee voted uh, to adopt a certain section to allow the trust to make changes to the, pl the plan itself by adding deductible, in increasing our co-pays and changing deductibles. And in doing that you have to share the savings, 25% of the savings, but has to go back to the union. So those numbers were finally finalized and we got those numbers and they were a little higher than we had anticipated. Um, so we will be moving forward with that, but those numbers changed. So right now we're looking at a 4.6% um, a increase to the town or $114,494. How does that go? So, how, where is it incorporated into the budget in terms of that going back in under the health in terms of what is contributed to the health insurance for the next what, cycle? So, or? I, what, what I do is I take our uh, whatever our current enrollment is mm -hmm. and um, by person, yep. and I break it out between who belongs to Frontier, who belongs to the central office, and then when we do the savings, it's calculated basically by the sa by person, so I just had to mm -hmm. change the rates. So I had to incorporate a piece of that um, to the central office because everybody, even though it's the union that gets the share, anyone who participates gets a piece of that saving. So part of it is attributable to the central office, which increased the numbers. Mm -hmm. okay. And the town will be doing this with the teachers here in Sunderland as well. Okay. So they pay more on the co-pays and, and so on up front <coughs> than they, so the, the, in terms of what it winds up saving in the right. plan. It, right. So we went up, what they're saying, so what they did was they changed some of our co-pays and they added some deductibles. Right. 
And in doing that, our, we went up on our HMOs about 5%. If we hadn't, right. we would have gone up more. 10 point percent right so that the difference between that 10 percent and the five percent 25 percent of those savings go back to the union and they get to decide what they're going to do with them okay they just they they take, deal with that money as they okay. as they will right okay so we and then we sit down with our attorney and we negotiate with them how how that's going to happen why does that show up as a central office expense because there's people in central office on health insurance but are they part of the union it, it, you don't have to be. So you have to be a participant. Even though you're negotiating with the union, anyone who is a participant in the plan gets a piece of what the, of the 25% savings. So that even though the you had a statement in here at some point about how the premiums were only going up about, if I remember correctly, four or five percent, that this would be a significant in addition to that as far as a cost for the central office. Correct. The idea is it would have gone up even, even more. If we hadn't made these changes. And in, and, and in order, so it's sort of like, in, in order to allow the union to let us make these changes, they get rewarded by getting a piece. But the problem is, even though it's the union, anyone that's enrolled in the program, so we had to put a committee together. So there are retirees that are still enrolled in these plans that are affected. And so we have to get a representative from the Retired Persons Association of Massachusetts on that committee as a representative, because they too get to decide how that money is, is going to be used. Fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> um, okay, so when that's all been settled, let me could just report back to us how that, mm -hmm. wh where that wound up going. Not that, sure. I mean, I understand it's part of what was bargained and, and everything, right. but just so we know. Right, we're, and we're working on that right now. We're sending out letters, putting together a committee. <clears throat> okay. Otherwise, nothing changed on the budget from what we what we looked at in um, January. Okay. And I did send this this morning after I, you guys had it to look at the weekend. I did send this to um, Sherry Patch at the town this morning. Um, and I will also get her the Frontier, which we will be presenting at Frontier tomorrow. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, So, any questions on? I, I do. I, do, I, I want to just bring up one more thing sure. because Please. we talked about it last year, and it's becoming even more of a situation. And that is the school choice funds. Right. Um, we have to be. We have to get away from relying so heavily on them. And I'm thinking next year. There's going to be a, a we're going to need to take increase our budget by one hundred and ten thousand dollars minimally, and the town is not going to like that. Right. Um, and that's on page six of thirty-two. And I also gave you a report um, tonight. It looks like this. It's three pages, mm -hmm. and it shows um, our school choice receiving, our school choice sending, and our charter sending. Uh, what we ended up in 17 and what the December 18, uh, the, what the 18 looks like with the December projection. So we right now, we are down um, seven kids, seven students, uh, and our, we're down about $50,000 in revenue. And yet we have staff on that, who's, that just, who's in, whose costs keep increasing. And I'm saying that we're going to have a structural deficit next year of about $109,671. You walk yeah. me through this? Walk you through Yeah. So sure. Good. Okay. And just before you get to that, I mean, which is a, absolutely, and they're not, it's not going to be blindsiding them either because, no. because we, we talked about it last year and that was why yeah. they decided to do the override, but then the override failed. Yeah. Well, we're going to be at that same point again. Yeah, so I mean, I think 
and I, wanted, I do want to go through this too, but I think you know one of the discussions to have too, as we did last year, is should we be more um, aggressive even this year? I mean, it would mean going past what we're, the 4.6 whatever percent we're at right now already, uh, but to you know move more out of choice mm -hmm. um, because we know you know and, and and try to spread this change out over the a couple of years. But uh, you know I don't you know require some. Right. Magic. Well, they weren't for, they didn't go for it last year, so we can try it again. But... Yep. Yep. So anyway. So okay. So <laughs> our first page is our school choice receiving. So what we ended up with in June. We had a, we, we saw a total of 48 students, but their FTEs, they weren't here the full year. So they only stayed, we had 46.92 um, FTEs. Mm -hmm. So that's, they left early, they came in late. So how do we get, I thought the numbers were based off the October numbers? October? Not school choice. Not school choice. The chapter 70 funding okay. is what's frozen. All right, I'm just wondering how we get 0.92 kid. <laughs> Be because it's the amount of time they stayed. Okay. It's the we report the dates they came in and the date they left. Okay. So it's it, it's based it's a true FTE. Okay. So we had a sped increment of one hundred and fifty five thousand nine hundred and eighteen dollars and tuition of two thirty four six hundred or and to, uh, for a total of three thousand three hundred ninety thousand five hundred and eighteen. So the school choice, and so you just have to do the math for me quick. I, I thought so of those forty eight students, we're getting five thousand dollars. For each one, well, we're getting part of five thousand dollars because right. it didn't stay the yes. whole year. Right, and then is that forty-seven and five thousand? Is that two thirty-four six hundred? I'm going to pull my calculator out. Well, um, actually, my question is, how does the sped increment in the tuition differ? So, if you get sped services, we report that, and it's based on a grid, and that that gets reported in June and we get that money back. So if we have students that are school choice that are receiving SPED services, we get a, uh, we get, it's a, a, a formula that the SPED director fills out, sort of like the circuit breaker form. Mm -hmm. And she, she runs the numbers through for the teacher, the IA, and then we report that number and transportation if they're receiving transportation, and then we get that money back in. Okay. And in I did, addition to the five thousand. In addition right. to the five thousand. Okay. And so, what I really, I'm just, what I want to get a clear picture of, is, are, these, um, sped, um, evaluations are, occurring, after we've taken them in as school choice. We are just, we are finding the need, or are they coming in? They could come with an IEP. You can't ask. You're not allowed no, to ask. No. So you're opening yourself up to that risk okay. when you open yourself up to school choice because it's based on a lottery and so right. okay um okay so let's stay with the so with, that brings us to 390. that gave us 390,518 dollars in revenue so if you look below where did they come from Amherst 1.55, Conway 2.81, Deerfield 8 kids, Gil Montague is our biggest 20.56, Greenfield 5 students, Hatfield 2, Leverett 3, Northampton 1, Pioneer 2, and South Hadley 1. And what grades did they come from? Seven of them were in kindergarten, 11 were in first grade, three were in second, seven were in third, three were in fourth, six were in fifth, and 11 were in sixth. So you see, like, if we just look right there, we lost 11 and only, because 11 are gone, but only seven kindergartners, so now we're down some students. So now we did a, October 1st, we did our report, and there were 41 school choice students. This year. This year. 140,172 is the estimated spend increment because they must have been with us last year. That's who, why you get an estimated sped increment in December because they're repeat students. Uh, and then $200,000 uh, of the 5,000, because at this point we assume they're staying all year. So the estimate is 340,172. Um, so where are these kids coming from? Two are from Conway, six are from Deerfield, 20 are from Gil Montague, 10 are from Greenfield, one from Hadley, one from Leverett, and one from Northampton. And there's four in kindergarten, there's eight in grade one, 
There are nine in grade two, there are three in grade three, five in grade four, three in grade five, and nine in grade six. So again, we're gonna lose nine and, and we only brought four in. So every year we're going to be seeing less and less school choice students. Right, so because our, our, our building is now full of our Sunderland kids. Right, so we only approved, I thought, like K and sixth grade last year. <clears throat> Yeah, and and realistically, I mean, most are going to come in kindergarten, right. sometimes first, maybe first grade. Um, right. So I kind of, if I, I look at it like this, so my, see these seven kindergartners, they're now first graders. So seven to eight, we pick up one. Okay, that's what I was going to. Okay, gra uh, grade one, eleven, grade two, nine, we lost two. Uh, that's what. See, see, that's how that math's working on the right. I'm comparing I'm this. I'm not going. I'm not going across. I'm going diagonal. Yep. Okay, so that's our receiving. So the next page is our sending. So in in June of um, 17, we sent out 10 students. They stayed out. Uh, FTE 7.49. The town paid 11406 in a SPED increment and 37450 in tuition for a total of 48856 And where did they go? They were Amherst, Deerfield, Gil Montague, Greenfield, and Hadley. Although Greenfield and Hadley didn't stay around too long. Um, they didn't stay out too long. And they were in... Uh, Three kids in kindergarten, one grade two, two grade threes, one grade four, one grade five, and two grade sixes. Uh, so that was our 10. Now, preliminarily, it looks like we have 10 kids out again uh, with no SPED increment, um, and that would probably be the, the one that was given to us the year before was a sixth grader. So now there's no historical um, SPED increment data. So they're only giving us the Fifty thousand dollars for the ten students, um, and where are they going? Uh, three are in Amherst, one Conway, two Deerfield, two Gil Montague, and two Hadley. Um, two, and they were two kindergartners, one grade one, one grade two, two grade three, two grade four, one grade five, and one grade six. Um, the last page is our charter. And in 17, we had nobody. Nobody was out in charter. And this year, which I find odd, um, they must have been a move-in. Um, we have one at the Chinese Immersion in grade six. So I don't assume you just wake up one day in grade six and decide to go to the Chinese Immersion School. So I'm assuming that that must have been a move-in. Um, so the town will have to pay 15,394 because that's the going rate for the um, Pioneer Valley Chinese Immersion School. Well, a couple questions. Um, on page one, second line, the number under tuition is two hundred thousand. Shouldn't be two hundred and five. It should be there. There's a correction. There's a correction. So actually, there the correction should be there's only forty students. We have a student. <laughs> this is where it gets. We have a student here who's tuitioned in from Deerfield. But he's a school choice kid in Deerfield, and they gave him to us as a school choice student. But he's not our school choice student. He's Deerfield school choice student, who we tuitioned in over here into the Horizons program. Oh. So that correction has to be made. So it should really be 40. It should be 40 students is what we have, not 41. Okay. And can you, I think I heard you say that the SPED increment is... 140,000 there for FY18 preliminary was based on the uh, sped costs of the previous year for those students that were returning. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah, I believe that's how they do it, yes. And so that's the number that we are using for our assumptions about FY18 correct. revenues. Correct. And that would be, therefore, subject to change yeah. for the following reasons. One would be any sped costs for students that were not here at school choice the year before, Correct. or 
and this could be either a plus or a minus, any student whose IEP required either more or less dollars worth of SPED services than in FY18 than in FY17. Is that also correct? Yep. Okay, so now you see why I or have... Or they don't stay all year. Or, or they don't stay all year, but also... A thousand could change because they don't stay. All right, but the SPED increment, mm -hmm. the number that we are using for our assumption about what the FY18 numbers are going to be, and the reason I was having a problem with that last meeting was that it seems that that can change because, number one, it's not allowing for any new school choice students, and number two, it's the the level of sped dollars that we're spending for each sped student is as of what it was in the previous year and ieps change okay it's not just that we know what it is as of right now you know the, uh, with the year at least half over we're going on last year's data and i'm assuming that everybody's iep at least gets revised annually three years every three years only some of them get revised. Some of them get revised this year. They do triennials where they retest the students and then um, decide if they need the same level of support or if their um, profile has changed at all, if they made improvements, have they grown out, have they, for whatever reason. So they do triennial testing and they develop a whole new IEP. They meet once a year for progress meetings. They do meet once a year to follow the uh, the growth of the student, is the student meeting the goals that are on the IEP? If not, they make small adjustments there. But um, short of upping OT or PT services or um, re removing the child entirely from the class, the financial piece of an IEP doesn't generally change that much. A student is uh, diagnosed with a, a, a specific learning disability or a physical disability or cognitive impairment. Those kinds of services that they get generally stay the same, uh, but they do check once a year for growth to make sure we're meeting their needs and they're meeting their goals. But every three years they will retest the student and really write a whole new from the bottom up IEP. And yeah. every year the, the grid, that decides how much we get is increased by an inflation factor. So last year uh, in December, they thought we would get 143,280 in a sped increment, and we actually got 155,918, which was an increase of about $12,638. So we got 12,638 more than they thought we were gonna get in December. When do we get the, the school choice money. When does it does it? I, mean, I assume it goes directly monthly. to the town, correct? Monthly. Monthly it goes to the town. Correct. And it goes on a current year basis, meaning that we are getting the money that we are getting monthly in this fiscal year is based on the school choice count that we have this fiscal year. It's based on that three forty one seventy two that you're looking at. They'll divide that by twelve. And then when we submit in June, we'll get the adjustment in June. Okay. How do they deal with the school choice out money? I don't know because that's the town. That's the, t the town handles that, not us. Handles it meaning it pays for it. Yeah, it's yeah. not in our budget. Right, but so this is something that the town is basically getting they're getting that money taken away from 50,000 taken away as part of their state aid. Correct. Right. The deductions in their state aid. That's and I think they get paid state aid quarterly. Monthly. Monthly, okay. And so that's coming off of it. Right. But it's not harming the school budget. Yeah. Other than what's available from the town. Well, well sure, because we're all in the well, Yeah, it's I mean, we're all in the same town. Right, right, right. Yeah. So but it's, it's not directly part it's not directly right, reflected in our budget or yeah. Right. But I, I I I sent a email to Patty after the last meeting with several questions and one of them was about what uh, costs are borne by the town that have to do with uh, running this school. Mm -hmm. And um, I wasn't asking so much in terms of 
what might be reportable to the state as far as things that we were spending on education to make sure we were getting above the minimum or required minimum or anything like that, I was thinking more along the lines of um, to make us aware of the number of different things that the school is paying for that are part of running this school, okay? And that, you know, and... But there's a section, so when we do the end of the year report for the, well, first of all, as I, I said to you uh -huh. in, in the thing, we're supposed to have an indirect cost agreement with the town, the school committee and the town. I've been here five years, none existed before I got here. I ask every year, can we get an indirect cost? And it's just something that's never gotten off the ground. So when I do the end of the year report, I report a percentage of the, the assessment that the town pays to Franklin County, because that's for our, our non-teaching staff is included in that. I ask, I try to get actual numbers for the health insurance that they pay for our benefits. Some towns give me actual, some towns ask me to use an estimate. Um, this year, the town of Sunderland is gonna have to give me an estimate for electricity because they took that out of our budget. Right, but what your concern is, I think, is how this gets reported to the state school authorities. Right. I'm, I'm, try I'm trying to reflect all the costs that it takes to run this school. Right. My concern, okay, is to make sure that we on the school committee, who are, uh, I think, uh, a significant link, supposed to be a significant link with the town in terms of both, you know, arguing for the best possible school, but also communicating with and, you know, we live here in town, we're part of the town, so on, and I want us to be aware of the fact that the town is contributing significant things to the running of this school that don't get reflected in our budget. Okay, now that nothing, nothing there affects a dollar that you have on the spreadsheets or what you know, I, I, whether you have to report stuff to the state or not, that's something you have to deal with. That's not what I'm concerned about. I just want there to be a realization that this is another case in which we're all in the same boat. Right, but that, that's okay. what I'm trying to tell you, that the end of the year report that I give you is that realization that tries to reflect well, all costs that it takes to run this building okay, that I, are contributed from the town. That's, can we can move on, I think. I, um, um, where uh, I had, the one I hadn't realized was basically this town is eating the school choice outbound costs. Yeah. And we're not. That's correct. correct. And, and there was what? And they're what, they're well aware. Of it. We, we, this was a big discussion, uh, you yeah. know, leading up to the override back in two thousand nine, right. which is you know, we don't pass this, um, and uh, it's going to be a double whammy on the town budget because of the the choice out, and right. and that part isn't going to directly hit the school budget, but of course it impacts what the town impacts has. The town the finances, so it impacts what's available. So the school. year that we had to ask for the 10% increase was because their their amount to school choice out and charter was zero. So right. we weren't making school choice, we weren't making that school spending because no nobody was going out. And likewise, on the charter school report here, when we have a 15,000 plus out on the one charter school student, mm -hmm. that gets paid by the town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah um, Thank you. I, I, so, yeah, and then the, the other thing too. I mean, if we lose, I think the, the school's done a really good job of bringing kids in and retaining kids. But if we start losing kids coming in, that's that's where the double whammy hits. Yep. Not that's what happens. The cost to the town go up, but then we bring in less revenue. So I, I two. One specific question, one kind of general, I don't know if you have an answer. So um, you referred to the indirect cost agreements. Yeah. Do you have an indirect cost agreement with the other three towns? No. So none of the towns? No. Okay. They don't exist. And so when Dr. Carey came, I brought it to her attention, and it's been something that we keep meaning to get on our town administrator list because they should, it, it should be signed by both the select, it's the select board and the school uh, board as to what costs are going to be reported that the town pays. 
um, in other places that I've been in, it's always the health insurance. It's part of the Medicare tax. It's part of um, the retirement assessment for your non-MTRS teachers. If they do your plowing, they can char they should charge us a piece for plowing. Um, I, this is the first school district I've been in where we've had the electricity go to solar. So this will be the first time that we've had electricity reported. Um, we report if we have anybody at Smith Folk, um, the town pays for that. So that gets reported on our um, end of year report. If they pay for transportation for those Smith Folk kids, that gets reported. So even though that there, the agreement doesn't exist, I try to ferret out all the charges that I can to make it look as much for all four towns for what they are truly contributing to the running of this building. Um, so the transparency. Um, I just have a quick question. Peter, did you get a year-end report for uh, FY17? I got the final, um, Patty sent me the final um, budget uh, with like included down to version 5 and you sent me this and yes, that was very, thank very yeah, useful, so thank you. One more question. Um, so when we look at the, uh, to go back to the, to the, the spend money coming in, the spend money coming in is significantly more than, than going out, but what do we, and go back to kind of Peter's question, um, what do we attribute, what is most of our sped money, if there are changes? I have an idea of what I think it is, but I, I don't know, what is most of our sped money spent on? Teacher. My, my Instructional my, assistance. I thought it was going to be IAs. Uh, speech. PT, OT, transportation. So could it be the case, I, I'm just guessing, I'm looking just my experience, when um, changes happen on the IEP, that does not necessarily mean an increase in sped costs because those costs are already there because it, it's more, might be indirect costs, but a lot of times it's more involvement with IAs or right. more speech. So those costs are already there, so it doesn't necessarily mean, right. a change in IEP does not necessarily mean more expensive. Correct. It could, but, but it could, and that's why when you look at the staffing, we figured we needed the um, was it the OT or the PT? We needed her for one a half a more day right. uh, to, for services, so we increased her point one, and that and that that doesn't that's hard to do now. It's hard to do in December and January right. and February. If we've got to wait till we get the kids in the building right. because the kindergartners aren't as, uh, totally assessed. So we may find out in, in September that we got a couple of kids that need some services from speech, PT, OT. And so then our SPED director is looking, saying, okay, I need another half day here. I'm going to look at Deerfield and see if I can free somebody up. Yeah. So it, it, it's that type of... And I haven't dug down deep in the numbers, but I think I've heard references to it. I, I, I think we really do have a high IA cost here. The percentage of it is really large, but is it also the case that, and I don't know this for sure, that the, the need, I mean, I think you've said it before, the, the, the number of SPED students here are higher than the other three towns, the, the needs are higher, so is that the, yes. the reason? The, the needs are higher here. Um, the demographic is, is slightly different than the other three schools. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of that, I, I think, just has to do with the, um, Kind of the transient population and different things like that but we also house um, a, a special ed uh, separately substantially separate program here that saves um, other districts and ourselves you know hundreds of thousands of dollars and these students come i think right now we have five or six that are enrolled in it and they get highly specialized uh, uh, educational services so each one comes with their own IA now if they come from another district that IA is paid for by the other district but it looks like when we put our pie together like 24 percent of 79 percent are IAs but a lot of that we will get from the SPED grant we will get the, the funding back but we have at least five or six that are dedicated to that program we also have three, two, two preschool programs, and um, the students that are coming to us in those preschool programs, uh, some of them are very uh, needy, that, you know, this is their first brush with any kind of um, 
coordinated services, uh, they do get services from, but once they hit 2.9, they're here with us. And we have to provide them with highly qualified uh, in interventions. A lot of that is speech, a lot of that is OT, a lot of that is emotional regulatory uh, behavior training. Um, and that's why we needed to add one more person to help that. But in those rooms, I think there's two or three IAs, depending on the children, because some children can't control their um, impulses and they could hurt themselves or hurt others. So you've got, not only do you have teachers in there, but you have two or three, and then they go back and forth IAs, so there's like four or five or even six IAs just focused down there in preschool. Then you've got kindergarten, and then you have a host of kids that it looks like we have a high number of IAs, but a lot of these students are fully included in the classroom, but they need to have one-on-ones with them to be successful because their learning profile is such that without someone right there direct, you know, cueing them constantly to focus, they'd be all over, they'd be walking around, you know, you just need to have that kind of supervision. So we do have a lot of IAs, but we also have them aligned with specific special education students, not just free IAs helping out teachers. That's that's right. not the model. We so have. just to make sure that I just want to make sure I have a clear view of everything. So of, of the 48 kids with special education needs, out of 226, puts it at roughly about 21 percent of our student population. Is that significantly higher than the other with three schools? They, so I or is it more that the, those 48 have a higher threshold of need then. Their, their needs are definitely higher but the other schools and, and I if I have my computer I could um, tell you exactly but they go anywhere from 17 to 20 percent mm -hmm. they do um, even the high school I mean last time I spoke with Darius I think there were 70 504s mm -hmm. at the high school 504 is not um, you know, it's not individual, ADA is um, 504 and Individual Disability Act is IDEA, which is special ed. But that's, that's a big number. Right. But again, they have so many programs they have housed in their building as well. Um, we, this, I, I just need to, I just want to say that this school, more than all of them, does the most for their kids with the least, and their um, achievement rate, the students achieve so high, and, and we've had this discussion, yeah. they achieve so much academically, emotionally, you know, personally, the growth is amazing in this school. And uh, I do believe it's that kind of inclusionary uh, thing where you do have students that do have significant disabilities, but they're also included in the classroom, they're immersed in the daily activities of the building. But in order to, to attain that, you do need to have personnel. Right. You need to have someone with them. And, um, I, and I found out today, <laughs> um, the May Center is if if we can't if we can't maintain these students in this building, more than likely they'll go to the May Center. I guess the May Center has a, has had an increase uh, in their student population, so they moved. So the tuition was $110,000. OSD has raised it to 115 because of their new, where they had to move to, to service these children. So it would be, if one of these, if we could not service one of these children in this building, it would be an out of district tuition of $115,000 per kid. Right, and I, what, I, what I think what I really want to, in terms of getting, the devil's always on the detail, details and you can splice the numbers anyway, but if we're looking at, and, and I'm just, making up the numbers hypothetical, but if 21% if of our kids are identified as um, special needs and we have 25% of our uh, budget is IAs, but Conway has 20%, but only 15% of their budget, then how come Sunderland has so much? And I think that's the argument that would come to us. So in order to be able to defend that, I think we'd really have to dive into the details. It would be good. And I think Ben did some of this last year um, in our meeting uh, at the town um, to just have you know, to be able to talk through a couple examples in there, and especially in grades where, you know, the number might be on the high side for IAs and to, you know, to explain that it was good. I mean, it did come up last year mm -hmm. um, for sure in the discussion. So I think it's, yeah, absolutely 
good that, to and, and that's to be what, able to have. Um, you know, it's good to be saying at a macro level, this is why, and like here's a you know here's an example. Yeah. The, <laughs> uh, for, there's a couple things to look at. Sunderland last year spent thirteen thousand something per student, and we talked about this at the town as well. Other schools are spending seventeen thousand per student, and yet we're achieving great, you know, really achieving well. They're, they're doing so much with so little, but on, on the other hand, too, um, we do have to be cognizant that of the two classes of preschoolers, six of them have already been diagnosed with, a very, you, know, high, you know, autism, which is a, a pretty high, um, high needs uh, diagnosis. So, and, and the earlier we get them, of course, the more success we'll have, and, and we will be successful. But the uh, the thing that we, to really dive into it, when you're looking at numbers, I think that, that 13 versus 17,000 yeah. really tells the story. Uh, and then to kind of circle back, can we go back to this one and now, um, just enlighten me about why we're really going to be facing a structural deficit with the that's the uh, school choice money next okay. year. Okay, so if we look at, oh, let me find the page. Um, I mean, part of it is with what, uh, if there was the one that has what we're spending, but if you look like, if we're, we're spending like 460 something this year. Right. So go to page 30 of 32. I'm sorry, that's your intuition. 29 is 32. Right. So if you look at the projected, what I'm projecting for FY19, we've already spent some of, of 19's money, or 18's money, right. and that is 18's money because we're supposed to spend a year in arrears. So we should really only be spending 93,000. We're spending 466 which means we're using all of the money, 373. So now we're not a year in arrears anymore, we're spending right, what you, we're getting. Okay. I mean, I would say, Where are those if we were, how, how we, we've fallen behind over okay. time, but if you, if you looked at like we brought in, in um, FY18, 349, or we will bring in 349, is that, Right. We we thought we were going to bring in three forty nine. We brought in three ninety. Oh, so that okay. was a positive. Of right, right. Oh, right. That's right. The actual so, so three ninety. Right. Um, and you know. So we normal, brought in three ninety, but we spent four thirteen and two oh six. Right. And then, what's the two twenty four three fifteen? Is that what we had already spent? Right from the previous year. So, we actually, so that was we did better. We thought we were going to spend two sixty one, but we only spent two twenty four. So we did better. So we're left with one hundred and sixty six. Right. So technically, we should only be spending one hundred and sixty six, but we're spending four hundred and thirteen. So again, we're already spending two hundred and forty seven thousand into the current year. Mm -hmm. So we're spending a year and and. And, and mo we're, we're spending like two years worth of money. Well, at some point, two years runs out. <laughs> so now we've only got the one year's money. And we're still, it, our costs are, are still costing two, we, we've got the cost for two years of money. We're, and so we're basically spending, rather than spending it out of the previous year's money, we're spending it out of the, the current, current year's money. money. And um, because there wasn't enough in the ending balance for what we've allocated out of choice and um, and and so at some point we get to where <laughs> if we start you know if we're spending uh, over a hundred thousand beyond what we're gonna take in if our if our starting balance is less than a hundred thousand we can't okay. we can't actually even pull that off yeah. um, so. and these are classroom teachers these are that's a kindergarten teacher it's a first grade teacher well whatever i mean it's choices it's something right. it's, it's 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 a hundred thousand dollars right so <laughs> so either we get more money from the town or we're going to have huge class sizes <laughs> if the numbers are right 
the numbers are right. Well, I just take you back, like I said last meeting, to this time last year. Okay, and the number that was projected at this time last year was to end up with a balance at the end of the year of 34000 And instead of that, we ended up with a balance, and this is the balance at, you know, projected at the end of this June, okay, is now projected to be 143000 The cash balance. Yeah, real cash. Right. Real cash. Correct. But that's still not, it's still not enough. It's 143 plus the 340 is 483, and we're going to spend 466, which means we're going to only have $17,000. Assuming that the projections for revenues But they're are, going down. I'm just, go, I'm just, all I'm based on is what I see in the recent past. That's all I can base on. Our school choice numbers are going down, which means the budget has to go down with it. Well, yeah. I mean, one thing is, uh, you know, the actual this 390 for FY18, we're allocating 466, 467, okay? So that's $77,000 more than we brought in this year. And our numbers on choice, I mean, it seems they, well, they went down by seven this year. It seems likely it's gonna go down. In, I mean, it's so hard to predict that kindergarten, um, but I'm guessing if we have, what, nine that are, are, are graduating out, mm -hmm. I doubt we're gonna give Ben a number of nine for the kindergarten this year. I, don't, I mean, we're not there yet. So then we're, we're gonna have less money, you know, and the sped increment part, I mean, we just, we know that that's just offsetting some of the extra costs that we've had, so. Um, right, and if, so if Ben's gonna have 30, if he's projecting 30 kindergartners, that's 15 in a class. How many more are we gonna add to school choice? Yeah. However well, off it is year to year, and it's a, it, there's, you know, it's a, I guess, and sometimes it's been up and sometimes it's been down, but the numbers are getting, the ending balance situation is getting worse for us. It has been getting worse I guess for us over time. I, I guess I need to ask why you're recommending a budget that then spends $466,000 out of school choice funds. Because I have nowhere else to go, because the town won't give me any money. Town won't give you any money. That's the town's choice. That's not. That's correct. So we have to use our school choice funds. Well, and we were spending our uh, we were spending our school choice funds a year in arrears and being responsible so that we could ease the plan would always be spend a year in arrears. So if there is a major difference, we've got one year's money sitting there to make the adjustment. Well, we don't. I think Peter. I think we could go to the town and say, uh, and and we did this last year. Uh, Really, what we'd like is to spend less out of school choice and get more in an appropriation. Um, but you know, you can do the numbers with us, and we can all do them, sit there and do them together. Um, you know, it's going to mean. Oh, I, know, I, I understand. Yeah, I, yeah. I totally understand. Yeah. You know, yeah. There's a dollar here, a dollar there, and it's right. you know, but right. it's still this is being presented with the assumption that we need to take this much out of school choice because. We can't ask for it from the town. Uh, no, we did ask for it from the town. They said no. That was last year. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, we haven't met with them yet this year. That's correct. Yeah. We haven't met with them yet. Yeah. I mean, my perception um, was that um, we had a long talk about how each year the town can only raise, it was only something like yeah. 148000 So. It, we could go back and ask for it, and, and we're going to be told it's not there. Right. They're going to they're going to tell you Which in order to do this, they're going to need an override like right. they did last year. And we could advocate for that, and and I don't know where that'll go. You know, I mean, it did, obviously. It's... <laughs> but I, I feel like this is. Um, I feel like we're at the point of where we were, and Doug, what year was it when the override failed? 2009. 2009, so in 2009, the, the override- The first, the big one. The override yeah. failed, 
we make extreme cuts to the school. All the parents take their kids and go school choice and charter out because there's no services here at the school. We now finally build this back up. Our students are all back, except for 11 of them. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're, we're not gonna put the money in the school. We're not gonna pass the override. And then the parents are gonna start voting with their feet again. And the cho cho char choice and charter are gonna start out, are, are gonna start going up. Cause we're gonna have to cut music. We're gonna have to cut art. We're gonna have, and that's what happened. That's what happened the last time. So it's like we're here nine years later at the same point. And are we gonna do the same thing? And a lot of it was a function, the the school choice spending was a function of trying to keep the yearly increase low year after year after year after year after year mm -hmm. after that 10% cut. Because I think we spent a lot of years rolling in around 2% to 3% well, until when, that. Right. Well, so when, when, these, when these Sunderland parents didn't like what happened to the school when they override and they left, well, then we started taking kids from other towns in to fill their spaces. But now we can't because our kids are back. So we don't have room for school choice. So of course it's gonna go down. Yeah. And we're gonna hit the, the I mean, and, and, and I understand, we're gonna hit that wall of this is, this is how much the town can raise. Mm -hmm. Each given year. And Ben's not here, but he's concerned that come FY20, was it FY20, Lynn? He's afraid he's not going to have enough classrooms. Yeah. Because there's so many kids. Right. right. He's going to have so many kids back that we're, we're going to be short classrooms. <laughs> um, I've got a number of more specific questions. I don't know whether you know, should start firing away or whether you all don't want to sit through them or... Give me three or four of them. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, one, uh, on... You present on the latter part of this budget document a number of pages that show not only the proposed budget that's financed by the town, but also the amount paid by the various other funds. Correct. What page, we looking at? page 28 of 32. And which indicates asking for the town for 2,602,000, even though the total amount for running the school, when you add the other funds in, is 3,386,000. Significant difference. Um, so I think that's worth noticing, but also I'm wondering why on that, the last line of uh, page 28, the number for the um, spending from the early childhood revolving fund is 45,000, when on page 31, the amount for spending there is 88,329. Because I did not go back and fill it all up. That's what it looks like. And then how would that change that spreadsheet? It's going to change it significantly. It's going to change it by the difference between 88 and 55. 45. Unless something, so there's no 45. 43,000 different. 45. So I only put the personnel in. So will that, in effect, raise the grand total 3386? Yeah. Then there's also something going on because my number isn't tied out either. Okay, well anyway, that one will just, that may be just, it's not gonna, it's only gonna change the number in that column and in the far right column. Correct. Okay. Um, you have in here the an increase of 15,000 to shift over uh, costs for building security and testing out of the building maintenance line item. Correct. While at the same time, leaving the building maintenance line item at roughly 18,000. Correct. Okay. I looked at, and you have therefore an increase in the budget for building security and testing. Okay. Correct. 
Uh, this is on page four. This is justification for the budget, or explanation of changes in the budget. Okay. I look at that as two separate things going on. One is an accounting matter, which is just setting up a separate line item for the 15000 for building security and testing. No, because hang, hang, let me finish. And the second part is actually making the full 18000 available for building maintenance where only 3000 has been available before. Correct. And that therefore the relevant increase in the budget is 15000 for building maintenance and not 15000 for building security and testing. Well, that's the line I'm increasing. Right. The, but the point is, you, you have here a document that is intended to explain the changes to not only the committee here, but anyone else who may care to read it, including the select board. And it seems to me, if I read this the way it is, that we have initiated a no, whole new program in building and security and testing. When we're really saying is we're making $15,000 more available for general unspecified building maintenance needs. Well, is that not correct? No, I'm creating a new budget line for building security and testing. And the, the result of me creating that new line will be that the 18,000 in building maintenance will be available for building maintenance. And that's what's important. Okay, and then my question is number one, or my comment number one would be, we should be making sure we point that out because that's a significant thing. And then my question is, assuming this comes to pass, how, as we go through the year, do we make sure that money gets spent on building maintenance and doesn't get the way maintenance gets deferred all over the place, doesn't get, uh, end up being used for something else as problems arise during the year? Well, one thing wouldn't, I would look at that shift, that, that 15000 having always been in the 18000 causes deferred maintenance. Right. Because there's never been $3,000, I can't. Keep my oh, I, I, I'm totally, I think this is great. I think it's fine. Yeah. But it's just, number one, explain it properly. And number two, do how do we make sure that it gets used for building maintenance? I do explain it on page four of 32. It says currently these costs are taken right. from we the just, repair we, we budget just of $18,050, leaving very little to maintain and repair the building. A new line item for fire alarm monitoring and inspections Inspections of suppression systems, fire sprinklers, and the EMC, EMS system is requested. So I, I'm telling them why we need this money. So now, Peter, your concern would be how do we properly use the funds that now are becoming available? Just to make sure, it's part of a more general concern I have, which right. I'm not expecting an answer now, but it's a general concern. Mm -hmm. of, and because, again, I'm new on the committee, and, that, and the committee... Mm -hmm. And, and the school basically has a budget that from the town is one line item, but within the school, it's obviously many pages of line items. And so my general question, and again, it's just because I haven't been on the committee, is how do changes uh, get made? Because things change every year. Things change. So some accounts end up having more money than you need. Some have less money than you need. And a uh, you know, intelligent group of people running the school is going to make changes. And the question is, what's the process? Who needs to get involved? Who needs to make okays? And if the, you know, you could say the history, I'm not thinking just this particular school, but in all schools and all institutions, is when push comes to shove and you're a little short of money, you defer maintenance. Absolutely. Okay. So how, the way to avoid doing that is to set up procedure, okay, that prioritizes that that makes sure that uh, that money's gonna you know, be there to take care of building needs, rather than just, whoops, that's the first place you go look to. And then so, we have a whole list here of what we would uh, fix. Great, which we is, which I see that, which is already, okay, moving forward. Okay. So, but that's what we would use the 18,000 for. For that list? For parts of it, yeah. No, I would say, that first of all, you take that list, okay, and you see, when was this stuff priced out? This uh, front page, mm. very recent. Right now, recently. Right now, yeah. Okay. Um, this one and it's uh, the other pages 
Unfortunately, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the color one. I, 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 it doesn't I, matter. I could. I understand what's, that's for future stuff and so on. And yeah. I, I inadvertently. Uh, don't worry about it. it. Well, here you can have that one. No, I I made my notes on here oh, already. Okay. So the the uh, the yellow is um, hard to see. It didn't come out in my copier, my printer, but. You'll see the first uh, less than a year. These are the most important priorities that we have right now. Mm -hmm. And that's the first column. The, uh, and then the dark ones are five plus years. Mm -hmm. The ones in the middle, those are the yellow ones you can't see, but mm -hmm. those would be two to five years. Mm -hmm. And I did tell Doug, I will send you a color copy of this through the email. I'm, I just And is this the list that was put together for the presentation here about a year ago? It, when or has I, it been updated when I, since then? Yeah, when I came in, um, I asked Bob Lesko for each district to give a five-year plan. So this is dated the five-year plan, but the front page he made today, or the 12th, that okay. is today. Okay. So this is really what is current, what is absolutely necessary right now that we're hoping to get. And there's, a, there's another couple of issues. In the, on the top of the page, it says capital improvement requests, security camera upgrades, and uh, domestic hot water heater. We've asked for those. We've passed in a warrant, and we've asked the town for those. Um, you look underneath the projects, the boiler section, $5,000. What had happened on Friday is the boiler uh, burst, um, the, the tiniest crack you've ever seen, and it was two pinholes. And I've never seen anything like it, but because it was under so much pressure, the floor was completely flooded and um, all of the, you know, the insulation and everything. Mm -hmm. To repair that piece, and it's, they have to pull it out. There's five sections. A couple of years ago, for $9,000, we, we had a crack and we sprang a leak, and they had to pull out two sections, uh, the, the one, two. Well, this is now section number three that sprang a leak. And from the tiniest leak, I've never seen so much water come out, but um, they say because it's pressurized. We're okay because we turned it off. We're using the other one. We do have two boilers. Uh, on the back burner, um, and I'm thinking that it's in the uh, five, five years, you'll see the back page with current costs of doing mm -hmm. these things. Mm -hmm. 130000 would be to replace one boiler with three modular boilers. And that would be a goal or a dream come true for Sunderland. Uh, and it would be more efficient than what we have now. But right now, at this moment, we're using the second boiler and um, trying to find the 5000 to fix the, the first boiler that sprung when, a third when, when you say that, that, before that we're going to have to find money. Yeah. Okay. When you say these couple first couple things have been already submitted to the town and particularly the capital planning committee. Yes. Um, what is the plan for then uh, you know, meeting with the capital planning committee to uh, basically uh, help push these things um, along to get hopefully get favorable uh, consideration by them? If we just send them in and then say nothing more, figuring, well, we've sent them in, we've done our job, we're not doing near as well as we could in terms of raising the odds about getting them part of you know the, their their overall thing of, of overall priorities for the town. Sure. So we are we planning on going to their meetings? Are we plan? How do we plan to do that? We have a date for Sunderland. That's for the select board and the finance. It's not the capital committee. Right. Well, hopefully the capital committee might come. I think. Well, one of the select board. One Scott, the, Scott, Scott is Scott, Scott is, is the select board member that is so uh, the capital committee so yes. I mean we just I mean a emphasize it there and then be, yeah we can find out from him mm -hmm. when to when he, when would be helpful for us to show up beyond that in other schools in, in some of the other schools Deerfield there's always a representative mm -hmm. like you know when we do we you, you name you know do yep. the chair and the assignments one assignment is always to be the representative to the capital mm -hmm team and that it, it's something that you guys should probably think about doing is having a member assigned mm -hmm. to be the representative mm -hmm. to the capital committee. There should be a member of the school committee on the capital committee. Any volunteers, Peter? I can't wait to go to another meeting. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Yeah. yeah that'd be great. Um, Peter, when you mentioned, because uh, you brought up on the capital planning committee before, is this 
uh, boiler replacement for 130,000, which is several years out, something that along the lines of what you were recommending, those are the kind of things we should be bringing. I think that I think that that the goal ought to be to make it clear to all the interested parties what issues the school building has. Okay, and in making it clear, that may also mean. Uh, it means getting them involved in that evaluation. It may mean having a tour of this building with the people on that committee to show them, okay, here are the issues we've got. Because that's how you bring something front and center to somebody. That's how you get them to start losing sleep over it rather than just thinking, no, we can put it off for a couple more years. Yeah, I'm looking at, so... Rather and I, don't know, I don't know what's available for funds. I just know that there's a process that they're going to go through that if you're in the room during that process and you're making the chance. point, and if you're asking them over here, let's go take a tour and line up a time they can come over and here take a tour, okay, you got a better chance of getting stuff done. Right, so man, I'm looking at if we have this, this one for like 35000 as opposed to this one for 130000 is that larger big ticket items, uh, the big ticket items, the ones that we should be going to the capital? My, my sense is you show them the whole thing, right, and you let them also participate in what we're going to get try and get done each year. But you don't just show them, oh, a little bit, and then they come back later and say, why the hell didn't you tell us about this other stuff? Mm -hmm. okay, so that, that's my theory about how you, um, you approach I this. Some of these, I don't know how familiar you are, Peter, with the MSBA, the Massachusetts School Building Authority. There are probably some of these that we could get on... Um, partial funding, right? Partial funding. Correct. Uh, and actually, if this would probably be our highest town because our free and reduce rate is is, is, is that something that you could provide well i say me or the committee okay with some information about what might be eligible for state assistance on funding because i don't know the rules that's the website right there for what they have so they, they, they have it so the the, the problem is if we wanted to do like a major overhaul, that's a three to five year waiting list. Uh, if we wanted to do, um, you mean from the from the SBA? From, mm -hmm. Okay. That you're waiting three to you're five years if right. you wanted to do a total refresh on the building, right? Uh, or build a new building, which no. we don't want to build. No. Um, would we need an addition? That would be a three to five year. Right. But they also have an accelerated repair program. Right. But that's the problem. It's accelerated. And we just did this in Deerfield to do the roof. Right. And they didn't like it because the process went too fast. But that's why it's called accelerated. Deerfield because you're going to do like it within a year. Well, wasn't there some, once you enter that program, you're basically you, you're giving them the, the reins of the project. You that's correct. You follow control. their rules. But their their rules are no different as, as if we had to do it ourselves. And that's and I think that's where the misinformation from what we hear from Deerfield is. If we were to do this project ourselves, the law requires us to get a project manager, to get an architect, doesn't matter. What they, what MSBA has done, has vet, they've already done that vetting process right. that saves us time. Right. But they act like it's an added cost. It's not, we would, we would have to, the law says, we have to have a project manager based on the amount of money I, we're spending. I don't want to go down this rabbit hole. The only thing that I was under the impression that the project managers and all that was were coming from the other end of the state rather than from here. They, these were, but they get assigned. So it, if you want to get, if you want to be part of the project, you have to apply to the MSBA. People from this part of the town, uh, part of the state, aren't applying. They're not right. getting vetted. But then they want to be part of the project. Well, then you should have gotten vetted. <laughs> Okay, so that's at least something to be aware of. Yeah. And it's, you know, depending upon the size of the project and, uh, you know, to look into a little further and to see what the heating system take would definitely be covered. Okay. Okay. Well, so that's, but see, I would rather, I really would prefer, and I think it, the, the town side, they would prefer to know what all these possible problems might be and then, like, you know, you bring a few more heads. It's not like you get too many cooks and you spoil the broth. It's like you find their people right. on the town side that know a lot about some of these things because that's what their business is. And they, you can get some good advice. I'm not saying they're going to do the job, but you get some good advice. You get people making decisions that are smart about this sort of stuff. So the, the MSBA, the, the way we went about it is competitive. And we didn't want to compete against each other. So we, we picked what was the most urgent. Right. And what was the most urgent was getting Deerfield a roof. Okay. Then the second priority was Frontier, but Frontier has decided to go in a different way. And what was the, uh, what percent of the Deerfield roof cost did the state uh, cover? 
Oh, I, I don't remember. I mean, are we talking 10 or 20 percent? Are we talking 50 percent? Oh, close to 50 percent. So it's definitely worthwhile. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Um, did I say? Did I hear you say you'd be interested in being a liaison to the capital planning committee? Yeah, sure. Do we have to? Uh, do you want to vote, vote on that? Do we have to do a formal? I mean. Uh, I don't know if there's like if the if the um, if that committee's whatever you know charter includes having one of us be there. If it does, we could. I'm not sure. Know, it, I'm not sure it doesn't. It's the, but I think. It, but having somebody, whether we have like a a vote or whatever, but just we, at least at least somebody who's there and, and communicating. Can I can I go a, please? Can I go to a meeting and say that I at least have the support of the committee to be there representing you all and you so, know so I'll report I'll report back to the want, committee on. Yeah. And you know, like whatever. To be a voting member on it. <laughs> I'm less concerned about that. Uh, voting is not voting is not how you influence. Because so hopefully have your votes are unanimous. Just do in we, case we do, why we don't we have to take a vote that why we? Don't, why don't we just in case him, we endorsing him to go? Yeah. Okay. That's why I didn't know. So we're gonna make a motion. So, uh, I will. Okay. Go ahead. I will make a motion yeah. that uh, we have Peter as a representative from the school committee to attend uh, capital planning committee meetings. Okay. To represent the school committee. Correct. Right. All right. Second. All in favor? Thank you. All right. Hi. Doug, so second. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. And I'm right. I just think we need to. Don't so, make sense. Yeah, I mean, I think they're getting the information the every year, but I think to have that reinforced in the, the meetings right. while, while they're going it, through it. It can make a difference. Yeah. Because yeah. okay. it can't hurt. Thank you. Quick <laughs> question. Um, the security camera upgrades for fourteen thousand. Is that no, different from the building security testing? Yeah. Go ahead. Get something on the list. That's security. That, that's that's, that's, that goes in a whole other section. Um, I can go for one or two more. <laughs> yeah, I got maybe another half an hour or so. Okay, I guess I'm just. I'm not going to take up the committee's time with a bunch of nitpicking questions and let but, me... So I think if they're informational as opposed to you know, deliberative um, where you think we might want to change something. I mean, I think if you want to deliberate it, let's do it. If, not, if it's informational, I think we could get it out there like you did before as a question. That, that Patty can follow up and get us that info, which was so. Is that better if I time. email stuff and then she can send the answers? And yeah. Then I get time. I then have you got time to think about it. Because all of that no, was. No, I have time to find the data for. Right. Me. And all of that was, I mean, all of that was informational stuff that I think is appropriate. That's okay. Okay. To do through email. We're okay. Deliberating. That. Um, you know the deliberative stuff that yep. I'm not going to. I don't think we have to get into this now, but mm -hmm. I would like to get into it in the near, you know, some point before too long. And as I, it's sort of what I was talking about before, which I don't um, know the process for how, uh, you know, a budget is, first of all, a budget is, okay, it's a commitment to spend a certain amount of money, but then once you have the vote, yeah, okay, you commit to spend this amount of money, a budget becomes a management device, okay? And it's a question of, you know, how you then uh, function throughout the year with that as your management tool, okay? Mm -hmm. And what happens when things go wrong? and um, there, it's partly, you know, my concern is uh, to what extent, uh, you know, the school committee has a, a role to play there and what that role is. Um, and that, you know, that's where it's a case of more, you know, of less significant problems, you know, mm -hmm. that we have to go. But then, but then it's, but then it's the other, my other concern is if I think about something going wrong. By going wrong, I mean all of a sudden you need a bunch of money. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think about wh how that's dealt with, okay, in different parts of a town budget. Okay. And in some cases, if you have some sort of, you know, call it disaster, call it, you know, whatever, okay, uh, it gets dealt with because there's insurance. You know, mm -hmm. a police car has an accident, okay. <laughs> you, got, you got car insurance to deal with it. Uh, you know, same with the fire stuff, same with some building stuff, you know, you got building, uh, you got building insurance for various number of things, okay? Patty talks about, we have a student and we can't deal with that student with really special needs in-house here, he's got to go off to a school for, you know, more than 100k a year. We don't have insurance for that, 
Okay. And we, that's why we've always wanted to carry a balance in school choice because that was okay. our contingency. Now, that's now let me, now. That was our contingency. Okay, but, but let me just toss out a little more thinking about that, okay? It seems to me that there are always, every year, there are things that come up as special articles on the warrant, whether for annual town meeting or special town meeting, where things require money that wasn't expected. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. they come up. They just don't come up for the school because the, I think the general thinking has been the school has got this big number, they run it all themselves, and if there's something that comes up, well, they just gotta reshuffle their money and take care of it, okay? And the only time that I remember, I remember two times, okay, when special, you know, above and beyond that was done for the for the school. And the one time was a, was a relatively small matter, and that was, you know, September comes around and it's time for school, and lo and behold, we had 34 kids in fourth grade. 34 kids in fourth grade and one teacher. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the school. What was the problem? I don't know how it ended up like that. I, that was the problem. We had a guy on the finance committee that Just said, hell, four? there were 60 kids in my class when I, you went to school 70 years ago, and 34 was cool, so why are we worried about this? Okay, but I came down here and, you know, I sat in on the class for a while and said, yep. 34 kids in this classroom just ain't cutting it. So we had to, you know, we went through the process of the finance committee, you know, had a hearing and we had a spec called the epic selectman to call a special town meeting. And it took until like late November before we could hire a second teacher, but the town did it. Okay. And then the second one obviously was a much bigger issue, like a huge issue was when the roof fell in. Okay. And when the roof fell in, the select board and the town did not say school committee is your problem. Okay. The selectmen in particular spent an enormous amount of time, okay, involved with, you know, the whole repair operation, the whole how we're going to finance this operation, you know, a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, and obviously other towns were involved in getting our kids, you know, to go to school over there and all this procedure. But it wasn't like the school had to live or die only on its own resources. Okay, there's a point at which Okay, you can't say you take care of it, school, you know, you have money in your budget, just take care of it. Okay, so that, you know, if there are, you know, it seems to me that then you need to have a discussion with the other party holders, stakeholders in town about at what point are we supposed to keep reserves to deal with these type of circumstances or is this something that the town should be, you know, ready to, you, we're going to do the best we can. We've got this program in the school here, Horizons, which is already saving us a ton of money, and hopefully we'll continue to do that. It will hopefully be something that could deal with these kids, mm -hmm. okay? But if it doesn't, do you want us to try and be squirreling away this amount of money in the, in the budget or in school choice, okay, because you're going to leave us stuck and not help us if something like this happens? You know, what do you want? How do you want to deal with this? And I think that this is a discussion that needs to be had so that we realize that when something bad happens, okay, you all gonna leave us alone or are you gonna help out? So I think, I mean, I think you're you, you, on to, Does this I make mean, any it, sense? It, no, it, it absolutely makes sense. But, but as, as Patty was saying, I mean, really how it has been dealt with historically, part of the reason um, that it, it has, you know, hasn't been more often, uh, um, you know, situation where there, you know, there would be some level of needing to go back was because the rainy day fund, and we talked about it, is is it been the school the school choice was that kind of rainy day buffer, um, and which and it's exactly you know or a large part of why you know the best practice is to spend a, you know a year in arrears, not out of the current year's money. Um, so that it remains something that, you know, is a rainy day fund. And if you are, need to tap into it significantly, then you try to adjust or, or, you know, in some way offset that in the next year's budget cycle. Um, and, and now we're up against that fund. <clears throat> we're looking at that, like, you know, going to being cut too close, uh, and w which would then leave us in this situation of coming back to the town and saying, um, trouble we got, you know, we don't have enough money to pay for. Right. But if we're going to do that, if we're going to be in that situation, it needs to be clear to all sides going yeah. in that yeah. that's what the situation that and we so, are. If you want us to um, to avoid 
uh, increasing the budget too much. We are, you know, going to yeah. spend down our school choice, which we are, you know, which we are able to do this year. Right. Okay. Then you have to realize that this leaves us with less flexibility to cover a major right. alcohol disaster. Just for you know, another, you know, we call it what we want, but it's basically right. unexpected big bills. Yeah. Okay. And and see if you have that discussion, and if you seriously have that discussion, you seriously get people to realize that that situation exists, then if something does happen, yeah. they didn't say, no, we didn't know, but you know, right. you've always just taken care of things. Right, but, and we have, I mean, we've referred to it literally in that rainy day, you know, our rainy day fund, you know, is, is effectively that school choice money and- um, Right, but at some point- in trouble. And so, and I don't think, I think it may have to be that way, because I don't think, I don't know that we can have an account or maybe, I don't know, maybe there is something within the state that allows the, you to put it I think it the in. reason that the select board oh. is hands off is because it, it, it's by law that it's the school committee's responsibility to run their budget. That's right, but that doesn't mean that the school committee has to basically well, we could, ignore well, I don't, yeah. the Does concerns it? and the, uh, and the uh, positive benefits of... Yeah. You know, being willing to talk about this stuff with the town, so you figure out a joint approach. Yeah. Do, do you know if the town has a stabilization fund? Do I know? Of course, they got a stabilization yeah. fund. Yeah. They got probably—I can't remember the exact number, but it's something in the range of what, six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars. They got free cash. This recent free cash certification was again. I'm just guessing. I, I apologize. I don't know my figures. And I think it's around five hundred thousand dollars. Okay. They, now, there's nothing that says this is supposed to go to the school. But there's also nothing that says it's not supposed to go to the school. Okay, and I'm hoping, you know, we talk, you know, I'm hoping that we do such a good job here and we don't get any kids that we have to send elsewhere because I think that's a lousy experience for the kid, okay? And, you know, besides the money, I don't think that's a good, you know, that's a good solution for the kid. But if we do get in that situation, okay, the town's got resources but we ought to be talking about it and planning for it and thinking about possibilities and so on so and that means the school committee being and the administration being willing to share okay with them here's what's going on here here is what we're thinking about when we put this budget together here's where we feel like we got a safety net or maybe now we feel like we don't have a safety net and you guys ought to know about it and once they know about it it's their problem too so I, what i'm hearing I, what I'm hearing uh, Pierre say is basically it would, it would, be, yeah. it would behoove us, the school committee, to work with the other boards within town. That it might that it might be able to offset some costs. That communication is better. And you and don't necessarily you don't give up your authority. Right. Okay. But the authority is not you know, I mean, just a single school committee member. I don't care about my authority for you know running this school. I just care that we have a good school and we take care of it yeah. properly. I think, I mean... And I don't care who gets the credit I, for it. We'll absolutely be taking this approach, uh, you know, to the, to, into the meeting with them, the select board. Um, I don't think it'll be a surprise to them because cause we have been talking no, but it's a, just, about this. But I think to you gotta reinforce keep, you gotta it, every, it up. every time, right. absolutely. I do think the mechanism probably realistically uh, right now is if we could just build back the buffer in the in the school choice i think mm -hmm. looking to i don't think that's realistic additionally well but i mean either way whatever whatever the buffer is uh you know i think it's it's, it's probably even more unrealistic to ask them to to, to add a, a you know a, a separate rainy day fund i don't and i don't, I don't know what the capabilities are that that would even be but if it, even if there were i mean it's they're the same it's the same concept we, we need some money and it, it and to get to your point earlier with like what happens in some of the situations where, you know, you know, we, we, you know, one of the accounts is low. Uh, and I don't know if you, if this has come up since you've been on the committee, but, but it's, you know, reasonably often, especially towards the latter half of the year where, um, you know, administration, you know, has that on our agenda in a meeting where there's something like that and we need to, um, um, you know, we have one that's that's running towards a deficit, and one that's in a surplus, and we and we ship that money. Right. And um, and so the school committee has to approve that. Yeah. yeah. You have to approve all transfers between line items. Or we not? don't technically run a line item budget. It's really um, that they bring it to us as as best you know best practice. 
uh -huh. to, to incorporate actually, us into that. We don't run it. We don't actually make the transfers. So when you're talking about like, so I don't want to make a, so for this year, we let's say we had, we had a teacher budgeted for 45,000 and we hired one at 35,000. So there's $10,000 that we have available. Mm -hmm. And we're going to use it to buy computers. I'm not going to move the budget to computers because I might still need that money in the teaching, but I'm going to spend it in the computers. So then when you say to me, like, how do, how do you manage your budget? I look, what did we actually spend in 15, 16, 17, and make the recommendations for 18 and 19, saying that we're not. So in this case, I would make the change now for that $10,000. I would come to you and say, we have $10,000 in teaching and we really need it for the one-to-one -one devices. So we're gonna increase the 10,000 and decrease the classroom teachers. So you would change the light items? At the budget time, not during the year. But so we, the, but the budget. You, I'll overspend, a, I, you, I would, ra I wanna see where we're overspending okay. because that's when we, where we know we need to increase our budgets. So you're using it as a tool for uh, trying to keep track of what you need for the next year's budget. Correct, so that we get every year our budgets are getting better and better. But in, in some cases I know there's the, there, there's the things where we voted to approve spending money and then at the end of the year right. when there's a surplus to approve spending in certain ways. And then again, like that information that's coming to us in the financial reports, even though technically, you know, we don't approve a, a line item budget that we are, then it would have to, then, you know, in that case we would, any spending that went on a different line item okay. um, would have to be voted on. But well, I'll figure it out as time goes on. Yeah. And one of the things I wanted to point out is, I think it's not a major step, but we made a good attempt last meeting to take $10,000 off school choice and put it back on yep. the town appropriation. So that we're starting slowly, but trying to move that. And it did up us a little bit, but it, it, it was a good step in the right direction. Yeah. And then, I mean, we'll start with the town. The other thing I want to point out and, and Patty can, um, uh, you know, attest to this. This is not the only school that, uh, the only district that's using their school choice money. Um, everybody is. Everybody is. As the uh, costs go up, and we're trying to keep the percentage that we're bringing the budgets in at, uh, at a lower number, we're all starting to rely, all the districts um, are relying heavily on school choice. Yeah. So the message is the same to all the school committees. We, we're really relying well, I can, on that. Well, I'm not sure the exact numbers, but I mean, at, in that 2009, I mean, the state contribution went down dramatically, and I don't know, it's recovered some, but I don't know, I don't think it's, I don't think it's anywhere near well, that level that it was. We were, I, I think also the thing that happened, when, when the school choice money first started coming in, most school committees were using it for extras. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then, as the towns started having their financial difficulties because their state aid, right. we they wanted to, us to keep our budget increases low, so we started using the school choice so we could come in with a 2.5% increase budget. And that happened for several years. Well, we're at the point now we can't do it anymore. <laughs> um, was the uh, school choice and charter uh, language and mechanisms part of the 1993 Education Reform Act? I don't know. Has that's it been changed? When, when that's when they came in. When does when has that been looked at? I, what I would really have started the, really the, thinking. Like $5,000. Yeah, it's, it's still, has, it's still it's the amount that's been yes. that for, has that, I think. been operating under this for 25 years. I would actually really like to, as a committee, begin to uh, engage our legislative mm -hmm. leaders, legislative leaders, whether we craft a letter or something, I used to go back to looking at it is complete inequity between charter and school choice, and the entire funding format has to be looked but at. But they, they know that, and, and everybody is, is saying the same thing. You, and the school choice thing is never going to get fixed because it's only something that affects Western Mass. doesn't happen in Eastern right. Mass. doesn't happen in Central. We don't have the votes. Right. So the conversation is never going to change. I, I would still like to make, but the charter piece, I mean, brutally, brutally fueled. That, that, that. 
inequity in terms of yeah. and that's, how that's dealt with it. There's no, I mean. That's a national conversation. Yeah. And there's parts of that I don't feel like we're looking very closely at at town appropriations, but that is town tax dollars going out with no reporting coming back. Mm -hmm. yeah. There is we, there is money from our town yep. going to different places, and we are not getting any information back. They're supposed to, they're supposed to send us a report every year. And we got a three ring binder. I actually um, think that it's also supposed to be places that are supposed to generate new te teaching techniques, and that we should be engaging the charter schools to come and put on professional development seminars for our teachers to show us exactly the new techniques that they're using that will help our education really hold them to the task that they were set out to do. Well, I, 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 I'm in total agreement with you, Keith, because I, I mean, what drives me crazy is the child, like, I don't have a problem with the, the pioneer uh, Chinese immersion. I don't have a problem with performing arts. I have a problem with the Holyoke Charter School. I have a problem with the Four, Four Rivers, because mm -hmm. they're doing nothing different than what we're doing. What, what is their specialty? Okay. What are they doing? They're supposed to be laboratories for educational reform, and then that should come back to us to show us like these new techniques, new things we should do. And, and it's, I, I think it's just, it's just running the mill routine for our town tax dollars. And then if they can't, if they accept a child that they can't handle, they send them back to the they town. send them right back to us because we can handle them. We, we don't have a choice. I was, in, I was in Holyoke when that school opened, and you can't even imagine how many kids came back in the first two weeks of school, and it was hell. It was hell for to re-register everybody. Right. So I mean, I don't know whether I I, I, I love just futile attempts, but mm -hmm. I would I, I would still like to, mm -hmm. as a body, um, at least I just yeah I, to, to I, contact I our local legislative leaders and at least you know, craft letters and begin to start to. I think that the Education Reform Act of '93 is getting old now. It needs to be revisited. And I know that these have the state that the, the, the charter school choice is very different. They don't. They have so many schools within a town that the whole school choice things, they don't have to choice to a different town because they got yeah. six, six different schools within their town. Mm -hmm. But it's a school, it's the, it's the charter, it's but there's a, there is a inequity of funding there. They're both public institutions, but one is valuing a student at three times another, and there just needs to be some. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we, uh, a couple, uh, couple other superintendents and myself, uh, we did write a letter to. Um, to Jesse and, and to the representatives that were on the committee to approve, uh, they approve the charters every year and the amounts. And we did send one um, about four charters and specifically saying they're not doing anything different than what we're doing at our high school, but that charter stayed in place. We did send one about the Chinese immersion and that did not get to expand, but they're repealing it now. I have, I got an email today. Chinese Immersion is still trying to repeal that decision they want to increase. I think they're going to come back. They, can, they have the ability to do it every single year. I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't apply every single year to expand. So, um, but it's something to think about as a, as a body. Yeah. I, would, yeah. I would like to engage our, our, our elected leaders to at least, I mean, I don't think, to at least let them know that what's happening more and more. I mean, that's a part of what Peter's saying, too, is it's, it's engagement. More engagement, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to. I'm not going to be a rep to the to the state rep and the state senate to. <laughs> I'll, I'll craft a letter. You well. If you, I think if, if we have you know something yeah, to. If I mean we could get a, put a letter together and, and and approve it as a body and have it send it out send once on. a month. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. Well, the, the regional transportation one. I think we sent to twelve different senators yeah. and. Mm -hmm. Of course, that was just encouraging them to fund us at 100% um, because that's what the law said. Do we have a, is it for the next meeting or the one after that, that there was going to be a presentation on the school lunch program? I think there was something in the minutes about in that. In March, but um, Dr. Carey and I were talking, and we think we're going to leave it to April because what we want is to have Mary Delusa meet everyone. And since it's a joint school committee, we'll do it in April. So Mary will talk to all the school committees together uh, about the changes that she's been making, and then we'll present each town with their financials in, the, in their smaller meetings. Okay. Um, Okay. Great. She's got, so, she's got a small child, so it would be difficult for her to get out five nights to go to five different school committees. Do we, do we want to, I know it says vote none on this, but 
because it changed a little I, I bit from the last one. I have a version three because I, I corrected some of Peter's things. And please send me an email if you've got if you see more errors because I'd be do we need happy. To okay, that, that's great because then I feel like I can I can send you a bunch of stuff without necessarily taking so much of these guys' time. And, yeah. Um, and also, and, I'll send a copy to everybody so they see what I'm asking and your response and right. so on. So it's not like we're, you know, everything's out in the open. Just don't, but, yeah. you know, you, you, I can't, you, you, not can't, you can't get me for 40 hours a week. I understand. <laughs> you don't, and I don't, when I send it, it's not like, I mean, I no, would I like a response at some time when it's yeah. at your convenience. Yeah. yeah. So. No, it's like when I, I have like a cycle uh, and it goes by what school committee meeting. So I, when... So like today, I was preparing last week for my, I, I prepare on Thursday and Friday for Monday. So that's why I was able to go and do all the research and get yep. the numbers yep. and. Yeah, great. So, um, so do we need to vote though this, this no. version? You don't You're think You're not voting until next month. Okay, okay. You're going to have your public hearing, we'll, right, right. and but then you're going to vote after. I know, what, right, right, right. Do we have a date with the selectmen? I, I believe we do, don't yeah. we? Yeah, the 27th? I think it's <sighs> Monday the 27th. Is it Monday the 27th? I mean, we have so that? many, truly. Um, I think it's Monday the 27th. Right after the 26th. Is it the 26th? Right after school okay. break. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it was a Monday. Okay. Oh. Yep. That's why I have six o'clock Central One Town mm -hmm. budget meeting. The next night, Steerfield, the 27th. Right. We go to the town. We no, Waitley. We go to Waitley on the 27th. Okay. Right. We have not heard from Deerfield yet. That's right. I did ask about that. Or Conway. Okay. Um, all right. So the um, the Nasdaq report and the annual report. Do we? Um, how much time do we need? For well, this, this um, <laughs> report. Um, this is the Nasdaq report, and it's really for your own um, advisement okay. to look at. And you'll see historical enrollment and um, number of babies being born over the years, uh, and how we've gone up and down. But it's it's really just a bunch of charts with information and what they're expecting pre-K to 12. Yep. Um, yep. For whatever reason, last year they had 320. This year they have 307. Or last year they had 307. I don't know what they're projecting for next year. But what happens is our office puts these numbers into NESDAQ and they make these really great um, charts. But they're really just something for you to, to look okay. at and perhaps ask questions. This would be probably the most uh, important one. Where you, this is so different than the other schools because this one is our uh, data through the school years. This is our projected enrollment. So we're looking at by 2020, 340. Mm -hmm. So this year, 320 students they're projecting and 328. And that includes, of course, now that we have full day pre-K, we have um, mm -hmm. many students coming, which is a great thing. And, as long, and once that takes off, that will be another strong source of revenue they're, that would help offset that program but right now it's still too brand new they're projecting how many three oh because 328 next year that must be k uh b 3k through 12. 12. okay okay so it's just something to look at the other thing that we wanted to talk tonight about, or just to share with you, this is the report that's going to go into the um, Sunderland Town meeting, uh, the town report. book, mm -hmm. the town report that they hand out. And it talks about, um, you'll see a bunch of numbers that explains, you know, how they, they've gone up uh, the steps and the amount of money and then the budget. Um, this is a, uh, a report we were asked by the 
uh, town administrators that we add a lot more about our schools so that the taxpayers can actually read if they're interested. So we talked about um, you know, the demographic of our students, school choice, community outreach, uh, school and family partnership, our preschool, uh, technology professional development, our current initiatives, our special education, and our curriculum initiatives as well as technology and special thanks. So when we, uh, when we crafted this report for the town members, it was um, a, a collaboration between Ben, the principal, the uh, family, uh, school and family partnership person, uh, Karen Green, early childhood, Kim, uh, Kim McCarthy, our curriculum coordinator, Louise Law, uh, Scott Hall, our director of technology, and they all put together uh, pieces of information, Karen Ferrandino for special ed. So they really did a great job, and I'm hoping that there will be more people interested in actually reading about the school. Good. And then we talked about, oh, and then for your own notice, of course, we've got, uh, we appointed someone, she's covering for someone else, but, and then our enrollment at 238 on October 1st, and we're 236 now. The only other thing to add tonight is the, um, is Ben's report, and he is talking about residencies, uh, the Enchanted Circle Theater is going to come and work with our teachers. Uh, it's an art integrated tech theater residency for our grade two students. And you can read about it, it's going to be wonderful. And then they have the PT Theater Company uh, doing Dexter and the Dinosaurs. And um, this will be with our third grade students. And it is, um, the, it follows uh, Mr. March and his first dinosaur museums in Greenfield, collecting fossils near the Connecticut River, and um, a school-based performance will be the culminating experience for students and families. <laughs> On the back page are some very important dates, and today was school council meeting, and uh, Ben, I know, uh, spent time with his school council going over the budget. And uh, we have school vacation coming up, PTO meetings. Uh, school committee meeting March 20th, PTO, Cafe Sun, and um, our all district springs, uh, strings concert and band fest, fun, family fun night. Um, Sunderland in action on May 25th. And then, of course, we have uh, the field trips at the end of the year. So this is just an update uh, as to where we're going and what kind of fun we're having. So um, the 300th celebration on June 15th is coming up sooner than we know, sooner than we can think about. So we're excited for that. That's all the news I have. All right. Great. Thanks, you. Thank, Thank you. you. Um I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. <laughs> any other reports? Uh sorry, before we was there any No, okay. Uh I heard a motion to motion adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.